It does, but it doesn't matter. But if you want the numbers right side up facing you, that's okay. But as long as you know what the starting and ending angles are, then that's okay. Um, let's kick this guy aside. Okay, so that's resting position. But the zero is hypothetically perpendicular, okay? Now, uh, I think I emailed some of you back, but to make it perpendicular, you kind of have to have this perpendicular, okay? So uh, fulcrum, bladder malleolus, and then fibular head. Okay, so as long as that's relatively straight, you kind of latch down on that. Okay, so the goniometer now is at 90 degrees. And this is where the variability comes in. I, I want to have his ankle at 90 degrees. So I'm using one of two landmarks. You can use the plantar surface of the foot or the shaft of the fifth. I, it doesn't really matter. But what you want is the ankle at 90 degrees. Okay, so I take this off. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> fix that audio right there. <laughs> that's 90 degrees. But that's my theoretical starting point, okay? So if they can't get to 90 degrees, because they're like, oh, it hurts too much, that's as far as I can go, then the difference between the 90 and here, that's the negative dorsiflexion, if they're trying to get the dorsiflexion. That's as much dorsal, so they're negative, because they can't really get the dorsiflexion. So from zero to here, that's a negative number, okay? Okay, so let's just start normally first. So he's at 90, because this is at 90, and I'm eyeballing, this is uh, parallel, this is perpendicular, so the plantar surface shaft of the fifth is perpendicular to tip and fifth, okay? Now, there's several landmarks you can use, okay? Uh, the latest one that I saw, I just started researching online, whatever, the latest one I saw was, because you're looking at the movement at the talocrural joint, so you're looking at the surface of the calcaneus, really, okay? Because we've seen, uh, who was the dancer with the like whoop off foot? Really curvy foot, yeah. <laughs> we're not judging, Annie, we're not judging, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> uh, but when <laughs> so we plant our flex and there's that curve, it kind of throws you off because now you're looking at motion between the hind foot and the midfoot, right? So if you use the curve of the midfoot, it kind of adds a few more degrees. So a couple people from that demonstrated this in the PT schools, they were starting to use the, the surface of the calcaneus. A lot of people do use the shaft of the fifth. You have the same problem though, because the shaft of the fifth could go a little bit further. So instead of using the head or the shaft, most people, I tend to teach, use the base of the fifth because there's not much movement at the base. But what you realize though, is if you're gonna use the base of the fifth, you have to zero this out, which basically means you have to align this with the base of the fifth while this guy is perpendicular. So this is your new adjusted zero, whatever the number is, okay? So now this is the zero, holding everything where it's supposed to be. We're gonna have the patient, I'm just eyeballing this, base of the fifth. So now we're gonna dorsiflex, and that's the difference. So between that first angle and this new angle, that's your amount of dorsiflexion from zero. But when we started, it may not say zero, because we went from 90 degrees to, I don't know what that is, let's say 30 degrees, okay? So let's say the 30 degrees is the new zero, patient dorsiflexes, and now it moves 15 degrees. 15 degrees is your dorsiflexion, okay? So similarly, as long as you go back to the zero, so the original number, and you can keep it on the base of the fifth, as long as you remember what that starting number was, because that is the adjusted perpendicular. Or if you want to reset, we just, okay, let's get you back to perpendicular, it looks perpendicular. Hold it there, patient. We're gonna to move to there. Again, that's the adjusted zero, and then plant our flex all the way. So the difference between the first number and this new number is the total amount of plantar flexion. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, okay we'll go back up to the zero. Now, similarly, we can use well, ideally not the shaft of the fifth, like the plantar surface of the calcaneus, okay? Eyeball it, okay, I think the plantar surface is 90 degrees because my goniometer is 90 degrees and it looks relatively close. So now we're going to dorsiflex. And at this point, I didn't use the base of the fifth. I'm just using the plantar surface of the calcaneus. 
So in patient dorsiflexes, I follow the calcaneus. And so now, really, it's zero plus the amount of range of motion you want in the dorsiflex. So at this point, as long as you keep it parallel, that's when you can use the zero plus 15 degrees off the scale on the goniometer because it started at zero, or it started at 90, and then it moved 10 degrees, so then it's 10 degrees into dorsiflexion. Okay, but that's another way to do it. If you want to stay parallel with the foot the entire time, you can do that. You don't have to use the adjusted zero for the base of the fifth. So plantar flex, same idea. I'm just going to follow, and it's not on the base of the fifth, but I'm making sure it looks sort of parallel to the moving arm because this is not on the base of the fifth. It's, I'm trying to keep it parallel to the calcaneus. Okay, so that's the other way to do it. Okay, so to recap, parallel with the lower leg, uh, fulcrum or axis, parallel with the surface of the, the foot, the plantar surface. Your choice now, you can either use base of the fifth or plantar surface. If you use the base of the fifth, keep it at 90, adjust, so it's lined up. That is your new zero. Then you do plantar flexion or dorsiflexion from that point. Option two, perpendicular and parallel. Eyeball the parallel surface. That is your zero, plantar flex. Keep it parallel with the surface you used at the beginning. That is your plantar flexion range. Dorsiflexion, again, parallel with the plantar surface. I'm sorry, this is terrible, there we go. Okay, so that's zero, he's gonna dorsiflex, I'm gonna dorsiflex this as well to make sure it's parallel with the surface. And that's my dorsiflexion angle. 